Welcome to Finland. We're in the country's capital city, Helsinki, perched beside the frozen Baltic Sea for the latest event in the IDSF calendar, the 2001 European Standard Championship. 50 couples from 28 European countries have come to take part in the competition. It's an opportunity for those not even IDSF ranked to compete against the very best, including the number one ranked Italians Mirko Gozzoli and Alessia Betti. Inside the Lancy Auto Arena, the tournament is almost ready to begin. But before anyone can get their hands on the trophies, they'll have to demonstrate their ability in the five standard dances. So the five dances uh, are English Waltz, Tango, Viennese Waltz, Slow Foxtrot and Quick Step. Uh, the English Waltz, the Slow Foxtrot and the Quick Step uh, come from Great Britain. The Tango comes from Argentina and the Viennese Waltz, as the name says, comes from Vienna, Austria. In the English Waltz we feel a pendulum swing, it's very light, very confident. In the tango, the mood is a little bit aggressive, but in a very positive way, and you, you feel very quick. In the Viennese Waltz, you feel that you're turning all the time. The slow foxtrot again is a very light dance, basically like walking, so you keep your body at the same speed all the time. And the quick step, many tricky things, tricky steps and it's very fast and funny. I have really great fun at dancing it. There's a long day ahead for all the dancers here in Helsinki, very nearly 12 hours of it. And it's a lot longer than some of them are used to. The European Championship is the only IDSF event where the top 12 couples compete from the first round rather than from the third, which makes it a tough test, even for the top couples. I think it's a very important competition. We can perform with all the other good couples from the other countries, and so I think it's a very important competition. In this competition, there's no easy route to the final. Well, you still keep improving and trying always to do a bit more than in the, in the rounds before. You try to improve and to show really your best. And as the competition is going on and it's getting difficult, you still try to conquer all the other opponents. The Danish pairing of Marianne Eihilt and Brian Eriksson are feeling confident as they progress through the early rounds. I'm very happy actually. I think we, we have had three very good rounds. and I know we can do more, we have more energy to put out, but um, it feels very good and I'm sure it's going to be very good. I hope so. <laughs> Alessia Betti, one half of the world's top Italian pairing, is also on good form and the current world champions Kylie Jones and Jonathan Crossley have adjusted well to the unusual conditions. I say that because it's not only outside that it's freezing. I was told that it was in an ice rink, so I was prepared for it. And it's not actually as cold as maybe I was expecting. So it's not off the floor, it's very cold, but on the floor, it's fine. Mm -hmm. it's nice. Yeah, it's just when you come off, it's a bit cold, but it's OK. Well, after three rounds, things soon heat up as the results are announced and the dancers learn who's made it through to the semi-finals. Let's take a look. The locals will be happy because the Finnish pair of Sepanen and Reisenen make it through, as do Galchen and Domina from Russia. No surprise to see the Lithuanians and Danes there. The young Italians Swale and Cerazuli will be happy, but they're all up against the world champions from England. Scandinavia's faring well with the Norwegians through, along with the second Finnish pair and the Danish number twos. Italy are represented twice as well, with one of the favourites, Gortzli and Betty, through, and they're joined by the two German couples, Weiss and Schramm, and the Karabai siblings. 
One of the surprise couples who make it through are the Finnish pairing of Mika Jauhajainen and Nita Kortelainen. I didn't expect that uh, so much. We were aiming to semi-final, yeah, but, but it, it was, was... I know it's tough to make in the semi, so... We are very happy to yeah, make it. Of course, yeah. Usually every time we are abroad, so there is no Finnish people, but now there's lots of, so it's a different feeling. Yeah. yeah. As we join them on the floor for the start of the semi-final action, I'm joined by former South African 10 dance champion Greg DeVette and the former UK international and world masters champion Karen Hardy. It's heat one of the waltz. And here's the first of the Finnish couples, Alexi Sepanen and Sanna Maria Raisonen. Here's Karen, a new couple to the semi final. And I think dancing very, very well. Oops, a little bump there, but they dealt with it very, very well. Just, I'm aware of some gapping there, which, if they are to be contenders for the final, they need to make sure that that is perfected more, I think, Greg. Yes, I think it's purely a lack of experience. I'm sure that in the future this couple will certainly achieve everything that they set out to do. And their compatriots on the floor with them, the couple who weren't expecting to make it this far, Mika Jauhiainen and Nita Kortelainen. So Karen, we have a second couple from Finland in the semi. Is that expected? Um, they're on home territory. I think they're going to be very happy to be in the semi-final and we wish them luck. It's an opportunity for them to be exposed uh, with less couples on the floor. And um, let's uh, hope they perform well. Very unusual line there. Greg, tell me, is, uh, is dance sport making big inroads in Finland? Well, uh, yes, it appears to be. They have um, in the past been very strong in the Latin American section, but I see now with um, the standard dancers, they seem to be getting pretty far. So that's brought us to the end of the first heat of the waltz, and we move on now to the second dance, the tango. Here's heat number one. Let's take a look first at Brian Eriksson and Marianne Eihilt from Denmark. Excellent staccato action held in this tango today um, and a beautiful use of the music, Greg. Yes, I've very often admired this couple. Um, I particularly like the balance of the, of the two and the two bodies moving together. It's a very determined uh, Brian, I would say. He's been heard to say that he really wants to win this competition. Well, we'll find out if he can soon enough, but meanwhile, let's have a look at the second Italian couple, Domenico Suale and Giola Cerasoli. Now, this is the number two couple, Karen, from Italy. Apparently, this is their first major competition. Yes, from Italy, we, there's such a strong abundance in the ballroom, Greg. The Latin, they don't have any, um, or not so many people coming through, but the ballroom, they have a real feel for it. That's fantastic. They're renowned for their, their footwork, their speed, the, the choreography. Choreography, yeah, yes. Yeah, it's fantastic. Very interesting. The end of the tango then, and so on to the first heat of the Viennese Waltz. This is our first chance to have a proper look at the current world champions, Jonathan Crossley and Kylie Jones from England. Dancing on form tonight, Greg. They seem to be in control of everything they're doing, making it seem quite easy. Yes. Um, in this particular Viennese waltz, I don't think Jonathan's really extending as much as he could do. A little bit of tension here for me.
performing the fleckle there, dancing, holding his position in the centre of, of the floor. Yes, I think supremely confident. It, it certainly shows. He'll loosen up. And here are the Finnish couple again, Mika Jauhiainen and Nita Kortelainen. I'm aware of their gapping, Greg. It's something that has to be maintained throughout that we don't see. Do you see just there? Now yes. that comes, I think, through the quality of moving together, isn't it? Well, yes, obviously it, it's very difficult in this particular dance. Um, the lady is almost dancing solo. I don't think the gentleman is really leading her through his body. The end of the Viennese waltz, and it's being enjoyed by former Finnish junior champion Pianora Kaupi, who's now a member of the European Parliament. Now on to the first heat of the slow foxtrot. And here's another chance to see the English number ones and world champions once again. I think the judges, Greg, will be paying a lot of attention to the couple's technique here. If we're looking at backward walks there by Jonathan, they're going to be looking at the lowering of the heels there, showing the quality of movement, transferring of the body weight, and seem to be danced very well. Yes, I know that uh, Jonathan likes dancing a very slow foxtrot and he must be enjoying this one. And here are the Germans now, Marcus Weiss and Anja Schramm. Another new face to me, Karen. I have seen them before, but not that familiar. Germany in the past have held a great many champions. It would be good to see some new, fresh couples coming up through. Lovely long strides there for this dance. Yeah, it's very striking. So there we are, the end of the slow foxtrot, as we move on to the last dance of the semi-finals, it's the second heat of the quick step. And our first chance, have a look at the Lithuanians, Aranas Bizokas and Edita Daniute. Yeah, it's coping well now with this particular quick stove. I, I think it's quite fast, Karen. I'm, I'm rather hoping she doesn't tramp on that dress. It's very attractive, but... Yeah, very striking couple, Greg. They catch my attention every time I see them perform. They have a super show of action, and even though the music is fast, they're dealing with it very, very well. Yes, m manages to maintain a very good shoulder line. I, yeah. I've always admired that. And the world number ones, Mirko Gozzoli and Alessia Betti from Italy. Now here's somebody who's determined. Definitely quick, yes. very light, and like you say, determined to do well tonight. The end of heat two of the quick step means the semi-finals are over. Well, as the tension mounts, all the couples can do is wait. Meanwhile, doing their best to keep themselves warm. Not to mention awake. While they let the judges decide who's through to that all-important final. It's an important competition because it's the first time that we, we dance a European Championship 
because uh, now we are the second couple from Italy and so it's the first time for us and we want to do our best. You never know, the judges decide uh, which couple must go on, so we will wait for the result and uh, if we will get into the final we will try our best. One couple who are used to getting to finals are the English pair of Jonathan Crossley and Kylie Jones. It makes a difference. We won the World Championship last year in December and I think since then it's given us a lot of confidence in ourselves and it makes us feel a lot more relaxed about the competitions and about the other competitors, which is good because it just means we can really now concentrate yeah. on our own dancing. So I think that's probably why you've seen us maybe a lot relaxed and smiling a lot because it's genuine. The city of Pisa is home to one of Italy's most famous monuments. But now there's another attraction too. Italy's top couple in standard dance live just 20 minutes down the road. Pisa, for me... Obviously, I think that Pisa is the most beautiful city because I grew up here. And it's beautiful because we have one of the wonders of the world, the Leaning Tower. And we also have the sea nearby, and the climate is always mild. We love it here and the people are friendly. Mirko Gozzoli and Alessia Betti are the number one ranked couple in the world in standard dance, but in their hometown, they're just faces in the crowd. I don't think anybody knows us. Well, apart from our friends. They know that we're the top Italian couple, that we're amongst the best in the world, but in Pisa, the people don't know us at all. 26-year-old Mirko and 23-year-old Alessia have worked long and hard to reach the top. We've been together for 11 years. We started together because we had the same teacher. We were going to the same school and both of us had been without a partner. So we began dancing together. At the beginning we weren't a great couple, because I was taller than him. She was much taller, and I was much shorter, but we were dancing together. I was 13, she was 10. Yes, we'd started together, and our teacher was very hopeful for us. Then with time, I grew up, and I became taller. In many ways, Mirko and Alessia make the perfect couple. The rapport between the couple is very important, as is the difference in height. The height is important because we need to appear synchronized together, and the judges need to see a good silhouette of the couple. It's a good sport, because it's a sport for couples. That's why you've got to be very close, connected to each other. There's no real place for individualism. One should think of each other when you're dancing. Concentration is very important, but we concentrate much more in our practice, in our training than in competitions. In competition we think only about the enjoyment, putting on a show for the audience. Most of all we try to enjoy ourselves and do well in the competition and to be satisfied with ourselves. And what we've done. Italians love their sport. Football, motor racing, cycling, but dance sport still has a long way to go to catch up. Dance sport is not very popular in Italy. It attracts much more attention in England or Germany than in Italy. But other sports like football are much more popular because they gain exposure on TV all the time. And this makes them much more important. But no matter how little recognition they get at home, competing under the Italian flag is still a thrill. I'm really pleased to represent my nation in a sport like this, even though it's not very well known. Yes, most of all we're very pleased to represent the Italian flag. And we're pleased to be carrying on from other great champions like William Pino. Now we're the ones representing the nation.
and we're trying to do our best. Last December, Mirko and Alessia travelled to Bratislava in Slovakia to compete in the World Championship for the first time. For the first time, it was a good result. The difference with other competitions is that Mirko was much more nervous, and usually he's never nervous. It's true. I was a bit emotional and excited because it was my first time to do the World Championship. But it was a good experience and it went quite well. It certainly did. Competing at the very top level for the first time, Mirko and Alessia finished third. Quite an achievement. Now back to Helsinki and confirmation of the six couples that have made it to the final. Mirko and Alessia are there along with compatriots Swale and Cerasoli. The Lithuanians, Bizokas and Danute, the Danes, Eriksson and Eihild, the world champions Crossley and Jones and the Karabais from Germany. Mirko and Alessia looking surprisingly relaxed. Appearances can be deceptive though because there's an awful lot at stake for all the dancers here. This event is the climax of months of hard work. Specifically after our last tournament in January, we've been practicing now all the time till March, especially for this European Championship. And, well, we're looking forward to the next rounds. Even the favourites are aware of the tough competition. Obviously, there's a lot of good dancers in the final. And, you know, a lot of them, I suppose, are capable probably of winning on their day if they have a very good day. So, you know, we just concentrate on ourselves and our own dancing. And today's a good day for us, so we're quite happy. Well, as Jonathan says, they've got some stiff competition here, not least from Denmark. We prepare a little bit special to this big competition. All the English and this uh, European and worlds are the big competition for us. Yeah. We also prepare the solo dancers at home. So if we have a group of six people, then we dance solo dances for each other. So it helps us tonight when we go into the solo tango, for example. And here is the solo tango. It's the first dance of the final and the first to take to the floor a couple number 11, Arunas Bizokas and Edita Danute from Lithuania. It was Edita's mother who first suggested that Edita and Aruna should dance together after she saw him in a competition in St. Petersburg. Well, they've now been together since 1991. Greg, is it like a good wine? Are they getting better with age? They certainly are. I've, I've watched this couple now for the last two or three years, and their dancing seems to have matured beyond all recognition. Yeah, there's great depth in the quality of their movement. Those excellent yes. rondes there, weren't they great? Well, yes, those flicks were particularly good, and she maintains, the lady maintains the body contact, which, which I think is particularly good in this dance. I've also heard that his um, childhood hero was Zorro. Oh, yeah. so swift action there. Well. Yes. I the mask that. of Zorro. Hey, let's hope it does it for him tonight. I'm sure it will. The first couple in the tango then, Arunas Bizokas and Edita Daniute from Lithuania. Well, next up from Denmark, Brian Eriksson and Marianne Eihild. And as we heard earlier, they put a lot of preparation into this solo performance. I particularly like the solo performance, Karen, because it uh, enables us to really get into the what the couple are doing. It's so much easier to see, isn't it? You can. You can build a picture in your mind prior to them all coming on the floor together. You can see the quality of the movement. I mean, did you see how accurate that movement was then, a way, it's getting two bodies to move at the exact same time together is so difficult. Yes, and I think this is why he was practicing solo in front of his friends, because it's almost like doing a demonstration. Yeah, exactly. Karen, I find that a little surprising. Surely they're dancing at their peak, however they, they dance. Is, is dancing solo really that much harder? It's a 
different level of expertise that you need. You're now not competing against anyone else on the floor. You're totally exposed. Well, exposed or not, that dance was very well received here. Brian Eriksson and Marianne Eihild. But next, it's all smiles from the young Italians. Couple number 22, Domenico Suale and Giola Cerasoli. Well, because Domenico and Giola have only recently become the second Italian couple, this is their first championship. Actually, Greg, for an Italian couple, that was quite a simple opening that they gave. Yes, they have the reputation for having complicated choreography. But I think, again, because he's solo, he doesn't want to mess up. Yes. Dancing very, very well. Very dynamic. Probably their best dance. Certainly has the Italian passion as his compatriots. Yes, following after the past world champion William Pino, that was his favorite dance, wasn't mm. it? That tango. Uh, yes, hard, hard act to follow. Yeah. Domenico Suale and Giola Cerasoli. And from the Italians, we move to the English. World champions Jonathan Crossley and Kylie Jones. They were runners-up at the European Championships last year, so presumably they're hoping to go one better this time. Yes, and I think, Greg, if they get this title, that gives them the Grand Slam for the year. Well, yes, and I think that's exactly what Jonathan has set out to do in this competition, although he has some very strong opposition from uh, Mr. Gotsley and Miss Betty. Yep, and they're dancing excellent tonight. And we've had the separation of uh, Villa and Barry. And another great couple they were, Greg. It's a shame to see them not dancing together anymore. Yes, I must say, I miss um, that couple on the floor, and I'm sure Jonathan and Kylie do. Jonathan Crossley and Kylie Jones. Well, just two solo performances left to go in the tango. And now it's the turn of the top Italian couple, Mirko Gozzoli and Alessia Betty. Greg, you said these were probably the closest rivals to Crossley and Jones tonight. Well, so far, having watched the competition, yes, I would say so. And I think they've been pretty close to one another in competitions beforehand. So I would imagine that uh, Jonathan and, and Kylie would consider this couple to be very close in opposition. They have a tremendous amount of power in this dance, Greg. A lot of rotational work as well. Do you notice that? I've noticed, yes. Ronde is rotating again. Some classic figures still there, evident. clean shoulder line. Yes, a very accomplished performance from Mirko Gozzoli and Alessia Betty, the second Italian couple we've seen. Well, now for the last of the six couples in the solo tango, Sasha and Natasha Karabai from Germany. A brother and sister pairing this, Karen. Is that uncommon these days? It has been uncommon, but it seems to be coming back again. There's a, a lot of couples that seem to... I guess it gives them the time and the chance to dedicate um, together being a brother and sister. And Greg, how are they doing tonight? Are they in with a chance, do you think? Well, I, I think all of the couples would like to think they're in with a chance to win the competition. But... They've got a lot of work to do. I suppose being brother and sister means you can fight from the word go. <laughs> well, yes, um, without any emotional breakup. I was only joking.
Sasha and Natasha bringing the solo action to an end. Well, now it's time for the couples to be invited back onto the floor, this time for the group rendition of the tango. Karen, Greg, we, we touched on this before. Um, the differences in the couple's performance between the, the solo and the group rendition, it, it's the space, presumably, is the most important factor. Well, yes, if, now that they are more uh, people on the floor, you become slightly more tense as far as uh, the dancing goes, and you're aware that there's someone just around the corner. And I think you're also being marked on your floor craft, floor craft, your ability Correct. to move around the floor without making that impact, as we were about to see then. Yes. <laughs> Timing is everything. Well, we're looking now at uh, Brian Eriksson and Marianne Eihild, the Danish couple. Yes, I think going very well. Karen, I noticed the costume change. Does that matter? Do you think that has any effect? I think it's two things. Number one, it gives the couple themselves that extra lift, um, and it also shows to the audience and the judges that they've come prepared. So the tango, both solo and group renditions over, and it's time for those all-important marks. Crossley and Jones off to a good start, picking up six first placings. Godzilla and Betty, the remaining three first placings, and that puts them in second overall. The Danes, Eriksson and Eihild are in third. A fourth place for the other Italians, Swali and Cerasoli. A mixed set of results, though, for the Lithuanians puts them fifth overall. The Germans, Karabai and Karabai, a sixth. We move on now to the second dance of the final, the waltz. And we begin with the Italians, Mirko Gozzoli and Alessia Betti. Very musical dancers. And as you can see here, they have a beautiful pendulum swing. There we go. Excellent, Greg. Yes, looking very confident, Karen, I must say. And uh, footwork is what it needs to be at this level. I think what I like also in their dance is the ability to take such great strides but not looking like they're over dancing. And here are the other Italian couple, Domenico Suale and Giola Cerasoli. Well, now, uh, how do their styles compare? Is there such a thing as an Italian style? Well, so I'm told, um, Italian style in comparison to anyone else, um, certainly they've been described as being more passionate. However, I think here we're seeing a very balanced uh, display of, of standard dancing. Lovely picture lines there, Greg. Yes, yeah, certainly very musical, I must say. Very well controlled. The waltz and the audience really enjoying that. Time now for the judges' marks. Crossley and Jones again in first place overall, picking up an amazing seven first placings. The Italians, Gortzili and Betty, second once again, and the Danish pair of Eriksson and Eihild, third. The Lithuanians improve on their last result, picking up fourth place here, Swale and Cerasoli, fifth, and the Germans once again in sixth place. The dancers are back on the floor for the final of the Viennese waltz. Well, the couple's performing this Viennese waltz straight after the slow waltz. Karen, how do the two dancers differ? Well, the main difference is the restriction of the choreography. What we'll see in the Viennese waltz are only three variations, which will be a natural turn, um, a reverse turn, and then the fleckle in the middle, as we just saw then. We're looking now at uh, Brian Eriksson and Marianne Eihild of Denmark. Yeah, it seemed to have a nice free action, uh, Karen. I particularly lo like the way Brian moves across the floor. Yeah, creating the character very well. They get in a lovely sway 
on the natural turn and then we don't have so much on the on the reverse dancing it very well the German couple Sasha and Natasha Karabai now Karen I don't know what do you think but I find a lack of swing here in this particular dance yeah giving them a slight hiccup there's not that control of the foot close upper body super but I, I think it's coming from lower down yeah, slightly restricted. Surprising, the German couples are normally very good in this particular dance. So the end of the Viennese waltz. Let's see how the judges have voted this time. Well, the English pair still holding on to that first place, but picking up a few third placings there from the Danish, Slovakian and Finnish judges. The Italians and Danes remain in second and third positions respectively. No change at this end of the table either, with Aruna Sandedita from Lithuania fourth, Domenico Anjola from Italy fifth, and Germans Sasha and Natasha in sixth. Well, our next final, the fourth of the five dancers, is the quick step. Quite a change of pace here. Is that difficult for the dancers to adapt to? It certainly is, Karen. Don't you remember having died at this particular stage of the competition? Yeah, but it's a great challenge. I love it. It shows you're a true sports person now. We're watching now Jonathan Crossley and Kylie Jones from England. And there, Jonathan handling that little um, traffic uh, jam quite well. Very smooth, very cool, very collected. He's gliding across the floor. Yes, certainly not showing any strain. Now let's take a look at the Lithuanians, Arunas Bizokas and Edita Danute. You rate these quite highly, don't you? I do. I think a very stunning couple on the floor, dynamic, full of life, vitality. It's all that combination that eventually leads to being a champion, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, very good quality dancing, as you noticed there. There's no loss of contact, and that's very easy to do in this particular dance. Well, as you can see and hear, the crowd really loved that. How about the judges, though? Well, no surprise to see Crossley and Jones still up there on top. Gottoli and Betty in second place once again, picking up a couple of first placings from the Italian and Finnish judges, and Ericsson and Eihild in third once again. Swali and Cerasoli make fourth place for only the second time. The Lithuanians drop back down to fifth for this dance, while the Germans remain in sixth place. Now the slow foxtrot and the chance for couples to perform individually again for the judges. To start, it's couple number 45, Sasha and Natasha Karabai. Beautiful music, Greg. Yes, I was just listening to the uh, ladies' vocal rendition of this. Encouraging the couples to dance so well. Excellent use of their sides here. Stretching. Certainly showing a lot of control now. I was fascinated to hear you say that about the music, Karen. Um, certainly to my ear, it, it makes a difference. Does it actually affect your performance that much? Uh, is, it, is it better to dance to a good live band than to say a, a, a CD? Difficult question. I think it's going to depend on the quality of the singers. Um, we would all love a live band, but sometimes it can go against you. The slow foxtrot from Sasha and Natasha Karabai. Now the first of the two couples from Italy, Mirko Gozzoli and Alessia Betty. This can be love because I feel so well. No subs, no mm, nice little heel turn there, Karen. Yeah, and a done. lovely passing of the feet here. Again, going back to that lowering of the heels that I was speaking about earlier. It's so difficult to control that. Yes. But 
such a balanced performance. Excellent step there, I love that. Like a roller coaster ride. And keeping that body connection at all time. Absolutely vital. Very good use of feet. I notice stroking the floor with Foxtrot is what it needs to be done in this dance. Yeah. Mirko Godsili and Alessia Betty. Well, now for the couple who've come first in all of the four dances so far in this final. World champions Jonathan Crossley and Kylie Jones. I think holding titles already gives you that little extra confidence. Greg, you, you can't teach anybody that. It just grows within you. And I think that's what Jonathan and Kylie are showing us tonight. Yes, yeah, certainly a very confident performance, I must say. And yes, having won so many titles, Jonas and Kylie are careful not to do anything which would go against uh, any decision. They're sticking with a winning formula, in other words. Correct. Is there a temptation to experiment? Um, yes, I would say yes, at this level. Just as we see there. Jonathan Crossley and Kylie Jones from England. Well, we're halfway through the slow foxtrot as the second Italian couple, Suale and Cerasoli, take to the floor. Now, Karen, I gather there have been some uh, personnel changes taking place in Italian dancing, which uh, have sort of cleared the way through for this couple. Yes, we see the unfortunate loss of Fermo and Cerea, who we would have seen on occasions on programmes before. However, uh, I have heard that uh, Cerea has now teamed up with the very famous Roberto Villa, so we'll look forward to seeing them in the future. Beautiful dancing here, Greg. I am aware of a slight stiffness in this boy's back. However, I do love his striding action there. Yes, I think it's uh, a bit of nerve, really. Um, he just doesn't want to release too much. But yes, I agree, it's uh, a little heavy. Domenico Suale and Giola Cerasoli from Italy really enjoying themselves there. Now it's the turn of the Danes to impress the judges, Brian Eriksson and Marianne Eihilt. Now, Greg, I gather that next year this competition is going to be held in Aarhus in Denmark. Will that give this couple a particular home advantage in front of the home crowd, do you think? Is that, is that important to them? Yes, I think it's very important to them. They will certainly feed off the crowd. It'll lift their performance. And as the Finnish couple said earlier on, uh, he felt much more confident because he was dancing in his own country. They're a very consistent couple, aren't they? They've been together for 11 years now, so presumably they know each other very well. well certainly after that period of time, yes, you, you do begin to uh, learn from one another and one's likes and dislikes. Brian Eriksson and Marianne Eihilt there. And now for the final couple, number 11 from Lithuania, it's Aronas Bizokas and Edita Taniute. So, Karen, now another strong uh, contender for this title. I think we have agreed that they seem to have that very classical look and do very little wrong. Yeah, they've improved tremendously, Greg. I just love the power from foot to foot. I love the way they develop the movement right to the very edge of their fingertips. And the change in pace there, they have a slow movement, they're building sync very quick and they'll control it again with a very slow movement. Beautiful Rhonda, yes, absolutely.
the Lithuanians Aronas Bizokas and Adita Daniute. So to the last dance of this European Championship, and to finish it off, it's the group Slow Foxtrot. Now, Karen, I'm guessing that the dancers must really be quite exhausted by now. Are they just running on adrenaline at this stage? Yes, and they need to be on a very high adrenaline of all the five dances to finish with. It's the slow foxtrot, which is one of the hardest dances to execute. However, they all seem to be doing very, very well. Yes, well, I think... Um it's the quick step really that takes it out of you as we were saying earlier um, here though it's take your time and just squeeze every step Jonathan looking like he's enjoying himself there well he certainly looks relaxed I must say Partnering Greg, I think it's hard to describe to the audience how difficult it is to move with another body in front of you. Very. So that's it, the end of the evening's performances. The crowd have just loved it and are showing their appreciation as the dancers leave the floor for the last time. Let's take a look to see how the judges scored that final dance. Well, it's the same result as the four previous dancers. Crossley and Jones first, Godsley and Betty second, and Eriksson and Eihild in third. The Lithuanians, Bizokas and Daniute, pinch the fourth place here, leaving Swali and Cherasili fifth, and Karabai and Karabai sixth. Well, there's nothing more they can do, so time at last for 22-year-old Edita to catch her breath. We are quite happy with our performance today, and uh, yeah, we feel that we are satisfied the way we danced. Yeah. We all need to be satisfied with our performance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In a way, it's, it's, it's done. we've done our job. It's up to the judges now to, to give us a result. But at the same time, you do get nervous because it's all finished. So all you're hoping for now is the right result. So. Among the audience, Finnish professionals Katja Kukula and Jussi Venonen. Here they are. Third and the bronze medalist comes from Denmark, Brian Eriksen, Marianne Eichelt. Congratulations. And all dances, they were in a third place. The second and silver medalist couple from Italy, Mirko Gozzoli, Alessia Petti. All dances, they were in the second place. Ladies and gentlemen, hyvät naiset ja herrat. Euroopan mestari tänä vuonna 2001. The European Standard Champions 2001. They are coming from England. Jonathan, Jonathan Grossley, Kylie Jones. Congratulations. Real appreciation from the crowd who've been treated to an amazing performance this evening. Crossley and Jones were runners-up at the European Championship last year, but this year they're going to be crowned the 2001 European Standard Champions. And confirmation of the final standings, Crossley and Jones in first, Godsley and Betty in second, Eriksson and Eihild third. The Lithuanians took fourth place, the second Italian couple in fifth and the Germans in sixth. It's the one big title that we hadn't won to date, so we now done the Grand Slam, yeah. so we completed, it completed what we've aimed for. Yeah, that's right, so it's very satisfying and very nice, yeah, very happy. At the moment we are enjoying winning yeah. at the moment. We did and say that we'd, we'd like to win everything and now that we have done, we'd quite like to do it again. So we're going to see how the it goes. Yeah, we've got no definite plans. We're just enjoying it and uh, it's nice because we feel we're improving our own dancing and it gives us a lot of confidence by keep winning. So it's, it's really good for us at the moment. So we'll stay, stick with it. 
And so, as the evening draws to a close, we leave you with the new European Standard Champions Jonathan Crossley and Kylie Jones taking to the floor one last time to perform the quick step as they're on a dance. From Greg, Karen and myself, Bruce Howell, goodbye from Helsinki.